are Saint Martin. You are Saint Martin. The URSM, the Unified Resilient Saint Martin Movement, being a political movement, will be hosting a weekly radio program called You Are Saint Martin. Every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. on the Radio Mix 94.7 FM. I myself, Dr. Messalina, the political leader of URSM, will be hosting this radio program in which current issues, actualities, and general topics will be discussed with the people of St. Martin. So join us every Wednesday on Radio Mix 94.7 for our radio show, You Are St. Martin. You are St. Martin. Dear people of St. Martin, good evening. Welcome to your radio program, You Are St. Martin, on Radio Mix 94.7 FM. I myself, Dr. Marcelina, will be your host in this radio program. As you know, I'm the surgeon in St. Martin, serving the people of this country since 1999. And... As of recently, I'm the political leader of the political movement URSM, Unified Resilient St. Martin Movement. This is the movement, the political party, that will contest the upcoming parliamentary elections for country St. Martin. As you know, the URSM stands for putting the people and, of course, the country above self and believe in educating and informing the people of this country. We strongly believe, eh, we from the URSM strongly believe that there should be a sound balance between economic growth and a welfare society. We are presenting, as usual, on a weekly basis, a program in which current topics, community developments and issues, and general matters concerning the people of St. Martin are discussed. Today is a nice day because today we are inviting two guests in our radio program. We have today two invités with us. <coughs> the first person that I'm going to introduce to you is Mrs. Josiane Fleming Artsen. is a very known person with an impressive track record in her, behind her. She is someone that committed also to the URSM. To go even a step further, Mrs. Yuzian Fleming got so enthusiastic with our political movement that even now we have Mrs. Yuzian Fleming as a member of the board of the URSM. Next to Mrs. Yuzian Fleming, I have also with me as guest today Mr. Marcos Nicolás, is also a very known person in St. Martin, especially a person very known in the educational world. Mr. Marcus is an educator, a teacher at Milton Peters College here in St. Martin. Of course, our country is uh, challenged by many issues, also, of course, on educational level. And that is the reason, of course, that I invited today two professionals with a great history in, in the educational sector of this community. And today we will discuss a few topics and challenges in the education of country St. Martin. At the first place, I would like to welcome Mrs. Josian Fleming. Mrs. Josian Fleming, welcome to our program. Thank you, Doc. It's very good to be here. You're welcome. And Mr. Marcus, too, welcome. Thank you very much, Doc. Yes. To go back to Mrs. Uh, Josiane Fleming, Mrs. Josiane Fleming, as I introduced you just now, I'm very impressed with your, with your biography, with your track record as a professional in our society. I would like you to make use of this opportunity to, for yourself to use your biography as a background context to introduce yourself to the people of St. Martin. Thank you, Doc. Uh, first of all, I am... Um a St. Martiner from both sides of the island. <laughs> and I feel very good about that because um, I move very freely between both sides. Parents French, had a French husband, and um, which gives me both nationalities. Not not just a Frenchman, it's Mr. <laughs> Albert Fleming. I Mr. Mean, Albert a, Fleming. He's a legend That's right. in country St. Martin. Eh? <laughs> So you have been privileged to be the wife of Mr. Albert Fleming. That was definitely a privilege. Of and um, I lived most of my life on both sides of the island. 
and studied in St. Martin. I studied in the Netherlands and in the Americas. And um, during those periods, I, I hold a bachelor degree in education, bachelor degree in, in, in the English language, and a master's degree in curriculum development and a second master's in leadership. I'm still pursuing further education, especially postgraduate studies in leadership and management. Hopefully that will come to fruition <laughs> soon. Soon. <laughs> That's all. Soon, because there's so many um, roadblocks that hasn't made it happen yet. But I'm a lifelong learner, and um, the day I stop learning, I think that will be the day that I will be buried. <laughs> <laughs> I have worked across the spectrum of education on this island as a teacher when I first came, a principal, an executive director, a superintendent of schools, and a university president. And um, I've also been chairman of the school board, been a trainer, workshops, write policy documents, and I've also been a, a writer and author in the um, Daily Herald writing articles on leadership. I'm now retired. Hallelujah. I can't imagine <laughs> that you're retired. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear all this, I can't imagine. And I'm like. still <laughs> operating as a, uh, a consultant for education. I, um, I'm still an instructor at the University of St. Martin, which I love. And uh, I love to be able to transform or transfer and transform my knowledge to my students. I teach business and education. But my greatest joy has been working as a change agent and being an educational leader where I could innovate and motivate others in the educational change process and take institutions to higher heights. That's what I love. I, I love to make the impossible possible. And I was known for that. I also served as um, the deputy and minister plenipotentiary in the Netherlands for St. Martin. And um, that was, uh, I must say, that was really a good, a good time that I, I, I served in that position. I loved my job. And um, it, is, it is such a, a profound um, position that I think we still need to understand what a minister plenipotentiary really is, which we could talk about another time. We will time. go later on talk about it. I am a Rotarian. A Rotarian believes in um, service above self. So I've been a, a humanitarian for a very, very long time. I've, I've always known myself as working for others. And I'm now still a member of the Helping Hands Foundation. I'm the vice president. I've been the president for 20 years, so it was time to have someone else take over. I've received some awards. Um, the only one I would mention is the one from the Queen of the Netherlands for my outstanding contribution in education. We raised together, Albert Fleming and I, we raised nine children, and we are so proud of them. Impressive. So. <laughs> Very impressive. Actually, that is you're my a, you are in a life. professional in the in the educational field, but personally, you have experienced it for yourself, raising up nine children at home. It's yes, incredible, fantastic. I'm impressed with uh, with your track record, Mrs. Josiane Fleming, and that is also one of the reasons that I approached you to join me in forming this URSM because this country is in cry. The people are hopeless, and we are looking forward to new great developments for St. Martin in the nearby future. And with your contribution and effort, combined with the effort of all those that are uh, committed with this URSM, I hope we will get St. Martin soon on the other level and bring welfare to all of us in this country. This I have no doubt about that, Doc, with the URSM, because we are there for the people. And that's what we need to be there for, the people. Yes, nowadays you see that there is a disconnection actually between government and the people 
actually for what they went in for in government to try to to improve the, the standard of life of everybody, the quality of life. And once you see tradition, you see once they get in government, it's like they forget the people that actually mandated them to go take care of their business. And all of a sudden they forget the people disconnect from society and get in their own world and forget actually for what they were put there at place. But okay, we will come back on that too, Mrs. Uh, Fleming. On the other side of me, of course, as I have introduced already, I have Marcos Nicolás, also a very passionate educator at Milton Peter College. Mr. Marcos, the same for you. I would like you to use your biography and your impressive track record to, to help you in introducing yourself to the people of St. Martin. Okay, thank you, Doc, for this opportunity. Um, sitting here and listening to Mrs. Josian, uh, basically, I would like to say, well, let's move on to the next topic, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it stays impressive. Her that is so impressive. But yours is impressive, too, believe me. <laughs> Otherwise, I would not have invited you here. Thank you me. very much. <laughs> Well, um, I'm older than him, don't forget. Oh, okay. So you still have to. A few years more. To yes. Go, right? Okay, that is great. Um, I am a graduate um, education specialist and a technologist. Um, I studied at the um, University of Former Netherlands Antilles, um, basically on technology, technology teaching um, certification, that program. And also, and imagine that was in uh, I think 2008. Um, I did my postgraduate on designing online and blended uh, learning. learning systems. And I mentioned just now 2008. That means since that time already, um, we should have been focusing on the opportunities that uh, internet provides. Um, that um, program I did at the Open University of UK. But before that, I studied avionics in, uh, in The Hague. That was uh, very interesting too. I, I really enjoy that. Uh, currently, I teach at uh, Milton Peters College. Um, and next to it, of course, also, I say of course, at the University of St. Martin. I think um, all of us that have a particular degree should support our local university. Um, currently, uh, next to that, I also teach online, I think for the past four years. Um, this is my fifth year, actually, at an international school in Curacao. So five years uh, teaching online. And I also, <laughs> I'm currently also um, actually uh, a doctoral student. So uh, I have a lot on my plate uh, uh, for these upcoming years. So I'm, a, I'm born by a, a Monterestician uh, mother and a Kurosalinian man, father, very nice gentleman. I believe I'm a passionate person, especially about education philosophy of the 21st century. Um, I want to just jump sideways for a second. The philosophy of education is over 4,800 years 400. BC, I'm talking about BC, mm -hmm. already established in uh, Timbuktu, in Mali. And um, I am so grateful to see that Western societies basically use those same concepts in order to teach humanity. Nowadays. So, nowadays. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> so that is interesting. Um, what can I say uh, basically about myself? Well, I'm a software developer also next uh, to what I'm doing. I uh, love lecturing. I love debating. I think that's a very good one in order, for, in order to get us basically uh, more critical in how we think and how we digest things and collaborate together. And one of my passions is basically um, trying to discover 
and promote uh, Afro-Caribbean heritage. That's basically Your That's basically it. Yes. Great. Marcus, impressive. Thank you. Marcus, because of your track record too, uh, that's the reason, of course, that you're sitting here because you're a very passionate man concerning education in general and especially for St. Martin. But I think the most important thing you forgot is to say that you're an active member of the URSM, the Unified Resilient St. Martin Movement. And why do I say that? Because you're not only a member, but you're also very actively involved in the Committee of Education of the URSM. As you all know, the URSM is a new political movement, eh? but it's, it's very promising and we are working in a very organized way, preparing ourselves for the upcoming elections. And to be prepared, you have to have knowledgeable people together. And we have formed approximately nine committees. And for example, Mrs. Nicolas, Marcus Nicolas and Mrs. Josiane Fleming are forming part of the ed education committee of our URSM. But actually, it's an education committee to serve the movement, but actually with a bigger intention and vision not to serve a political movement. No, we are all in this because actually we want to serve country St. Martin in general. That's correct. Both of you are actively busy in the education committee. Huh? We, we thought about it. I requested let's start a committee of education because we are talking about a country since 10, 10, 10. St. Martin is a country. And that is actually on paper, but actually to make a country autonomous and, and, and make it, give it a status of country we will have to have a educated populace to help us forward. I believe that the strength of a country, of a nation, is based on education and the percentage of educated people in our country. We are talking every day about autonomy, about, uh, uh, about a country status that we have, but I do believe that we have to start doing things first things first. And the first thing, Mrs. Josiane, that I think we should do is divine, define as a country what is the level of education that we would like to have for country St. Martin. And I think a mission that you all have in the education committee is to define that. Mrs. Josiane, can you explain us a little where we are in our committee concerning the, the defining the concept and perception about education for the nearby future for our country, St. Martin? Well, at this time, we are actually defining all the challenges that we are having in our system and how we can change all of that. So because we are a political party, we are not going to discuss that today. Mm -hmm. But we are preparing the committee to have a forum where we would want to discuss it um, in general with people and with those who are involved with the URSM. And then we will come to a decision because we know that if we are building an auton autonomous country, education should be in line, the vision of education must be in line with that autonomy that we are trying to create. And um, you will see that as, as we unfold what we want to be speaking about today, that um, we need to first lay the foundation. Yes. Mrs. Yuzia, what, what, what I was wondering is, if we are talking about vision for education for country St. Martin, we have to lay the foundation. Is the inspiration for this foundation that we have to make for country St. Martin, is it based only on the daily challenges that we encounter every day in education for country St. Martin, or otherwise? <laughs> it's based on many a things, and uh, Marcus can, can help me out here too. But the, um, the, the whole point we are making is there must be a vision for the country. Mm -hmm. And if there is no vision and people don't know what it is, everybody will be doing their own thing. And, and that is what we have not yet been able to, to articulate um, for country St. Martin from former education specialists or from former education ministers. That's the word I wanted. So we are uh, we are all working, but we are going nowhere. Yes. Ideally. So the boat is going to sink at a certain time or it's going to be stalled in the water somewhere. Because a vision is there to give you direction. Mm -hmm. 
if I may uh, interject for a second. Um, without a vision, it wouldn't make sense to educate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to put it kind of clearer in that sense. Mm-hmm. Because the education supports a vision for it to become reality in midterm or long term. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have a vision, actually what are we doing? Because y- you can only measure the effectiveness of an education system based on your vision. Mrs. Fleming, we cannot, of course, in this early phase, disclose uh, all the, the, <laughs> the, the, the issues that we're busy with. That will be at the end, of course, because we will have to explain the people of St. Martin by uh, by nearing the election date what we're planning to do for country St. Martin. We will have to do that for the people to know that, that we're serious, that serious people. Looking back in the way you guys are seeing the, 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 the future concept, vision for St. Martin, do you think that the finance will be the biggest challenge to execute this vision? I think we have a lot of resources already. What we have to do is bring them our philosophy that we want them to carry, train them. The, 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 but the most, the most um, finances we will have to, to, to use would be for t- retraining teachers. Mm-hmm. Retraining teachers not only in our, um, in our philosophy and in our curriculum, new curriculum that we, we will have to rewrite, but also... We are importing teachers at this moment, and a lot of teachers don't have an idea what the St. Martin history and culture is all about. And that is key. That is key because they are actually the ones who are preparing our children. Yes. Yeah. So we need to get a a real teacher's college that will retrain the teachers and those who are coming in also will go through the process so that we can have um, a kind of unified a unified um, schooling Correct. for our you know, students. It's, it's strange. We're working on the future of this country. We are, we are introducing a lot of professionals in the, on the educational field from different countries. That is a such great. I'm very grateful that they are leaving their own country, their whole family, their friends to come to St. Martin to help in the education system of this country. But on the other side, as Mrs. Yuzian says, uh, it's, it's very strange to invite people to come work here and we do not have a handbook to, to give them to say this is the guidelines how we want our education system to be for our, our, our children, for example. And it's like you said, um, Marcus, it's uh, we have doing something without a vision. Yeah, we have to move away um, from taking following systems without understanding why the system has been that way. Because, um, and Marcus can come in now, because we all know that um, we, have, we, we have been, we have a history of copying the system from the Netherlands. Right? Yes, that is correct. I believe since uh, 1955, we have a post-colonial system uh, in the in the countries here in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. and basically, um, if we talk about education in in general, in essence, it is the idea to form a people, right, in order for that people to serve their country. Now, if you would set up a system in Holland to build Holland and you force it on six other islands, once you're preparing that people, they are still serving Holland. Yes, that's yes. I mean, that's the reality. And you can't blame the Netherlands for no, that. No, not at all. Blaming. Not no. at all. You can't blame the Netherlands no, that's for that. No, that's not our intention in no, this conversation, no, no, no. but we, we really put out the truth. Yes. And the way you, you explain it to us is, is understandable. That is, of course, you're using another country system to educate people that at the end of the day is going to have to serve a totally different country with a totally different history, a totally different culture. It's going to get us in a moment. In so a what must St. Martin do? Pardon? In that case, what must St. Martin do? Because 
we have to be sure that we know that we need these kinds of expertise to be able to write our own system. Of course. And that is what the commit- Committee of Education is trying to do now. Correct. As pre-work preparation to the next phase when we're going to step up to try to be part of government of the upcoming new government of St. Martin. But, um, Doc, the education is a very broad topic. Yes. So um, what we want to do is just um, break it down a little bit. And we want to talk about um, the different ideologies that we feel are good ones to use on St. Martin. Very good. Mrs. Yuzian, it's a very interesting topic. The time is, although that the, the time is, is flying on us, I will have to, we will have to take a break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Dear people of St. Martin, welcome to the second half of our radio program, You Are St. Martin. As I've said before, we have today with us two guests in our radio program. We have Mrs. Josiane Fleming Artsen, and also we have Mr. Marcos Nicolas. As we said in the introduction of those, these are two experts on the field of education. And just now, before we had our break, Mrs. Josian just said that she would like to elaborate a little more on two theories in education because we are now in this phase of this discussion in this radio program, actually laying the foundation for a rigid, stable uh, structure to offer St. Martin a new educational concept that is going to mature our people in a way that is they are going to continue building and constructing the St. Martin that we all are envisioning. Mrs. Fleming, um, just, tell two, me, yes. th- just tell me a little about the two theories in education. The, the, two, the two theories mm-hmm. that we want to edify today are um, the first one, and we all know that um, education is the acquisition of knowledge and skills, etc., etc., but it is much more than that. John Dewey, an American, he existed in the late 1800s. And his idea was that education must be progressive. Okay? So he stood for progressive education, meaning that um, it is, you are constantly growing. It is never, there is no end to education. It is limitless. And that's the reason why we have some people that, call themselves life, lifelong learners because they believe that education never stops. Because if I'm 70 and or 50 or 30, I can always continue my education, even if I'm 80. Mm-hmm. Because education is about developing, growing. And that is why also when we have um, PhDs, we add a little, just a little new knowledge to what we had before. Yeah, that's what a PhD is all about. Just have to come with something new. And that's how the world turns and we create and initiate new ideas. And um, um, and, and, and Dewey, Dewey believes on, we, we learn by doing. Mm-hmm. So education has to be a hands-on approach. Students learn differently. We even have the whole idea of multi-intelligence students learn differently. Some students learn by seeing, some students learn by hearing, some students learn by jumping up and down, but we all have different intelligences. It has no end. And um, my my favorite one um, theorist is Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire is a Brazilian and he, um, he really comes from the 1900s. He died in 1902, 1902. The late 1900s. This is the second theory you're going yes. to speak about now. Paulo okay. Freire. Yes. And you know what is so good about his theory? It's because um, they are based on liberation theory. Emancipating your minds. And um, that's what we need on St. Martin. A- education that open your mind to higher stages of consciousness rather than just depositing information into the system of the children. So this is very important. The consciousness, the awareness, um, 
making people um, applying more intervention, more interaction and inquiry, more curiosity. When, um, when he talks about um, depositing information, he's referring to, um, you know, when we were going to school, we had a teacher, we had classical, inf- classical education, mm-hmm. and the teacher would stand before the classroom and tell you everything. Mm-hmm. He's saying, no, that's not the way. Because you, becomes like, you become like a bank, and you, um, we deposit money in the bank. So the child is now being like a bank, and we are depositing information into the into the child and you nothing is coming back out of the machine mm-hmm. yeah so we have to move away from that because in that kind of a system there's no dialogue and that just creates people that are very passive yep. you know and freire says there must be dialogue and not only from one side but there must be mutual dialogue and mutual respect because many of times we, we believe that we know everything and the children don't know anything but no children teach you oh definitely they teach you mm-hmm. and um once there's a dialogue you can learn from the students and the students will learn from you so it must it must go both ways and the one other point is um reflection reflection how do we reflect about an issue mm-hmm. And when you can express or articulate that reflection, you are taking students to a much higher level of thinking. Mm-hmm. And that's what his pedagogy is about, critical pedagogy. Mrs. Mm-hmm. Fleming, I'm very sensitive. Sorry, uh, Marcus. And let me just give a little feedback on what Mrs. Yuzian just said. Mrs. Yuzian said something very important. Uh, Education has to serve us in emancipating our mind. Right. That is such a beautiful sentence. The problem that we have in country St. Martin is that we have been actually passive in the emancipation process because of our history. We have always been followers of, for example, the Dutch system. Mm-hmm. It has been imposed on us, not that it's it's wrong. No, it's different. So at a certain moment, as Mr. Marcus just said, we just take over a system passively and we just continue doing the same that has been imposed on us while excluding our own identity, our own vision, our own feeling about our own country and where we want to go with our country. And that's why, Mrs. Josiane, I'm very glad that now you are you are now elucidating this emancipation process in our mind that I think education has a big contribution in if we want to design an <coughs> educational concept that is going to trigger emancipation of a young country, St. Martin. And you know, Doc, the, 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 not the best way I should say, but if you are, if I'm the bigger country and I want to keep my people down, what do I do? You impose their education. I impose their education on me. Mm -hmm. And I also teach them the language. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because language is so subtle and you never really understand it until it's too late. Yeah. You can oppress people through the language. And educate. And make them really passive. I want to interject for a minute. Just want to come back on Ferrari's... um, um, philosophical world fields. I find it very interesting. Of course, there are more, and it should be uh, a big debate which direction we're moving uh, towards. So, um, of course, using or applying this uh, philosophy, um, our students learn to apply. They uh, they learn to interact. They learn, they learn to debate. They learn to reflect and find an identity. Now, the very important item for reflection is that reflection can bring change, Mm -hmm. which that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to just interject for a second. Marcus, I have a totally different question for you. Or One of the things that caught my attention was that you mentioned in your your CV that you have contributed to the development Mm -hmm of a dropout prevention program for the school-going kids in St. Martin. Yes. 
As you know, uh, as such already, education is a big challenge in this country. The socioeconomic status of the country is, is deplorable, yeah? it's, it's, it's very challenging. And next to that, we have a high percentage of dropout in our community. As you know, as I said many times already, 49% of the persons walking around here in St. Martin do not have a finalized secondary school education. So every one of two persons that you see do not have a secondary school education. And actually we will have to strengthen our education for our country for us to become a balanced autonomous country and call us call ourselves country too can you elaborate a little on this this prevention program that you had for those dropouts okay thank you very much for that question uh, well basically um, I developed this um, this program because most of the time when we deal with issues in school they are behavior related and most students that drop out out of the system is due to their behavior. So now, in order to keep those students in education, you had to come with a, let, if I may call it, fix. Mm -hmm. So how would, would such fix look like? Well, you will have to take that group of students, take, take them out of their natural habitat, just like what scientists do with animals, it's not um, something bad that I'm saying here. Um, take them out of their natural habitat, place them somewhere else where you can give them attention. That's one of the first thing. Um, our kids, do they, do they get the attention at home? That's, that's, a, that's a very important thing. Next to it, okay, how can you support the school with those let's say activities mm -hmm. or uh, goodies if i may say uh, in order to help those students of course um, there are other related issues like um, they cannot progress within the system now why wouldn't they be able to progress because the world around them looks completely different than the system of education you have mm -hmm. so if I want to become a car mechanic, we have thousand cars or bikes, but we don't have the opportunity on our level mm -hmm. to develop, that would create some stress. So there are probably uh, a lot of reasons, but those, those are things that I uh, personally uh, discovered. Great. Mrs. Um, Yuzian, we know that a country without a Vision. institution <laughs> like a university is doomed to fail. Doc, I'm happy you brought up that point because I could not imagine becoming country without a university. And over the years, the university has suffered a lot because of the lack of legislation and higher education and the lack of sufficient funding to offer the programs necessary. In a developing country, building your human capital is extremely important. Very, very important. And many ministers of education have come and gone. And currently we are hearing that the higher education ordinance is on its way. In fact, since last year, the USM has been preparing and reflecting on the national ordinance to decide what the USM would be like. Minister Rudolph Samuel will be the champion should this ordinance come to fruition under his watch. And students will have limitless opportunities to higher education and scientific research that will give USM a new birth. And I am definitely looking forward to this change where we can educate our people here for education is the key. We have to stop importing so many persons in key positions and prepare our people to take their rightful place in this country. And it's, it's, it's of course a challenge because of course it's quite complex in a country like St. Martin that as you say we have to import a lot 
of expertise to make it happen for this yes. country. But on the other side, we will have to think of a formula to make a, a, a university functional to serve the country. Because I do believe, do you want to have a country status? You will have to offer the people of this country a great educational opportunity for them to make sure that you have the educated people together to carry on your community. Marcus, you're also working at the university That's correct. St. Martin. What is your participation in this? What do you do there? Well, I'm uh, uh, one of uh, the faculty members. Mm -hmm. um, that's the <laughs> that's my main... Uh, He's also a trainer in technology. Well, that is that true. That he does very often. And um, I have a, what do you call it, a speed dial to call him whenever I have a problem. Wow. <laughs> very reliable person. <laughs> Mrs. Yuzian, we are talking about a serious challenge for our community being education. What yes. do you envision for the future of St. Martin on education level? First of all, we need to have an education vision that is known to all and take a good look at what we have and ensure that our teaching and learning is based on the vision. We need to review our statistics in terms of results and identify the expertise on the island first, and then get to work to align vision and curriculum and encourage our young people to further their studies and make, it, and make sure that they also choose professions we need on this island. But that means that this university at this particular moment called the University of St. Martin is not an accredited institution? It's not accredited. It's just a, a recognized institution by government if it has been recognized since um, I left. Oh, okay. I just wanted to interject for a minute again. Um, I think the, the, the most important thing, and I think we, we said it over and over again, and in discussion uh, previously with uh, Mrs. Josian, um, I repeated this too. In order to do anything effective to the system, I need to have a point of departure. That is my vision. Mm -hmm. So what is it that we want? And based on that... Where are we? we yes, and based on that, we start... Um, tweaking in a particular direction. And that is actually what uh, you are doing now in the Committee of Education of the USM is to define the structure and the level and quality of the education that is actually custom made for country St. Martin. That is actually that what, is we, correct. what we're doing. Mrs. Eugene, do you believe also in fortifying The, the regional uh, relationship that should be very strong. That's very strong. But do we very. have that now, for example? At the, the university? Yes. USM is presently working with the UVI to enable accreditation of its programs. For example, the general liberal arts program and the education program are accredited through the University of the Virgin Islands, and the business and hospitality programs are accredited through the United Kingdom. So as an institution, the USM is not accredited per se, but uses other institutions' accreditation programs, accredited programs rather, with their accreditation, which allows students to transfer to other universities smoothly. I believe that once the ordinance is signed by Parliament, the USM will have the recognition it deserves and will have to work on its programs for full accreditation. Mm -hmm. Um, Marcus, what do you experience as the biggest challenge nowadays by the generation of students that you teach at Milton Peters College now? Okay, <laughs> thank you for that question. Well, um, question. Even, even if the question will be addressed as to uh, pointing to the international school that I'm teaching uh, online. So those, those kids... They, they need a different type of teaching. The pedagogy need to change. Yes. Uh, the pedagogy of the 21st century. Now, of course, we're coming with a lot of uh, uh, words, nice words, etc. 
the world changed, so so should we too. And um, I want to go again back to that point of pedagogy, what it is. Now, when I went to check on the definition, of course, I know the definition already, but I thought, let me go and check some of them. I found it on a website in um, uh, at a uh, UK uh, website. But again, it's the same pedagogy that I see they have 4,800 B- BC in uh, Mali Timbuktu. So what I want to say is nothing changed. The structure stayed the same. However, with technology um, booming, everything changed and you have to move in the direction with technology. Now, I'm not saying uh, everybody needs to be on a tablet. What I'm saying is the opportunities that technology uh, uh, presents, mm-hmm. you should hold them in order to move the country forward. But mm-hmm. you know what is interesting that you say that, you know, the technology is changing. But with my in my experience with students at the university, they prefer face to face. Mm-hmm. They prefer to have the teacher in the classroom. Mm-hmm. And um, I love to teach online <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> it's good for me. I can just stay home and teach, you know. Yeah. But um, online teaching is difficult teaching yeah. because you need to keep the student concentrated. You need to keep him engaged. Engaged, yeah. you know. They have mm-hmm. to be engaged and you have to you have to know the technology, yes. mm-hmm. you know, because if you're just opening up and teaching and you're not using your um, breakout rooms and so, you know, because all of that is in the is in the in the Zoom. <laughs> mm-hmm. You have all kinds of possibilities to make the class really uh, interesting class. Yeah. And and as a teacher, you can't be monotonous. You have to be you have to keep them awake and keep them engaged like he says and they they have to it can't be just talking they have to see also yes that is they have to see so you have to have a powerpoint or you have to have something to show them you have to have videos to show them you know Mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's very interesting i find now i did um uh, i just want to interject Mm -hmm. again i did a um independent research on the impact of remote learning on instruction and learning uh, i mean how did we uh, went through that process mm-hmm. it was a massacre for a lot of teachers if i may say so because you know what you have to do but you're in a whole different environment i mean if i need to compete against uh usain bolt swimming not running I might probably win mm-hmm. because you're in a whole different environment and we we have to understand that environment in order to reach the child. Mm-hmm. It is an interesting topic, this education, and what I realize <laughs> more and more is that There's a we, lot of power in education. There's a lot of power in education and especially what I realize though that we are very insufficient in our educational system especially if we look at how this education system is serving the fortification of country St. Martin. I'm negatively impressed with how we are dealing now with education in our community. And I, what I realize is that, uh, that politicians and ministers are going to work every day like business as usual. I do not see a revolutionary change approach to the educational system that on the long term we emancipate the mind of the people of this great country. And as long we do not not free our minds, we will not be able to fortify, to strengthen our country and give it the direction that we would like to see it go forward with. And you see, that is why it is so important that you have the right people mm-hmm. in the right places. Yes. You know, because when you when you when you have when you have been empowered, and I'm saying empowered because you are well educated, you have the in, in the in the area where you get the position, you know how to go about it. But if I have to ask hundreds of people around me to guide me and to tell me something, I have to be ahead of them. I have to know so that I can make a, a decision based on their advice. 
But what has also worked against our evolution as a country is that most of the time, because of political culture, we have appointed not the right person in the right chair to to execute the function. And you see, that's what I find is wrong. It's not because I was on a list that you need to appoint me. No. I need to appoint someone who's qualified to do the job. Yes, and we are now at the point that we have to start seriously thinking about the right persons to occupy the right chairs to serve the country maximum for us to achieve what we want in this country. Yeah, it's education is really fundamental. Eh? And um, one of the other areas that even though he talked about technology, I have found that... Um, Students are leaving the high schools um, not being fully prepared to enter a university. Mm -hmm. And they have so many challenges with language, um, not being able to write the English properly. And um, it, it's, 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 it's amazing what you discover at the university level. Mm -hmm. it's, it's heartbreaking. And you know, we have all kinds of devices now that if you don't know how to write proper grammar, go to the grammar check. Mm -hmm. But the young people don't even want to do that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Go to the grammar check. There's an answer on the on the, um, the laptop for everything. Mrs. Yuzian and Mr. Marcos Nicolás, we are nearing the end of this program. As you can see, we are running out of time. Already? I want to already we it's a very interesting topic but unfortunately it's over so we will have to finalize this program okay. I would like to make use of this opportunity Mrs. Josiane Fleming to thank you very very much to be part and participate in this discussion and the same for Mr. Marcus Nicolas thank you I just want to say that we have to educate always to guarantee the existence and the continuity for a sustainable St. Martin, Good. because that's the direction we're going. Okay, thank you. This is a nice way to close this uh, program with these nice sentences. <laughs> Marcus? They're not only nice, but <laughs> no, we mean it. <laughs> we mean it too, of course. <laughs> At the end, I would like to uh, thank you both once more for being part of this uh, radio program. Thank you very and much. And of course, as a leader of the URSM, I once more want to accentuate that I'm very proud and happy to have two experts like you in the field of education to help us with education of Country St. Martin for the nearby future. Once more, both of you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and looking forward to have you back next week Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. on our radio program, You Are St. Martin. Good evening.